Hi guys, it's Grandma Cleveland here. Today we're going to do the another uh, Peter Rabbit story. We're going to do the Flopsy Bunnies. Um, and in this story, there's a word that's a really big word that you probably haven't heard before. It's called soporific. Soporific, what a really big word. You know what it means? It means sleepy. Now Grandma, she drinks her coffee, so she's not sleepy. But let's go on to the tale of the Flopsy Bunnies. It is said that the effect of eating too much lettuce is soporific. I have never felt sleeping after eating lettuces, but then I am not a rabbit. They certainly had a very soporific effect upon the Flopsy Bunnies. When Benjamin Bunny grew up, he married his cousin Flopsy. They had a large family and they were very cheerful. Now, I don't remember the separate names of their children. They were generally called the Flopsy Bunnies. As there was not always quite enough to eat, Benjamin used to borrow cabbages from Flopsy's brother, Peter Rabbit, who kept a nursery garden. Sometimes Peter Rabbit had no cabbages to spare. So when this happened, the Flopsy Bunnies went across the field to a trash heap and in the ditch outside Mr. McGregor's garden. Mr. McGregor's trash heap was a mixture. There were jam jars and paper bags and mountains of chopped grass from the lawnmower, which always kind of tasted oily, and some rotten squash and an old boot or two. One day, oh joy, there was a quantity of overgrown lettuces which had shot into flour. The Flopsy Bunnies simply stuffed lettuces. By degrees, one after another, they were overcome with slumber and lay down on the mown grass to sleep. Benjamin was not so overcome as his children. Before going to sleep, he was sufficiently awake to put a paper bag over his head to keep off the flies. The little Flopsy Bunnies slept delightfully in the warm sun. From the lawn beyond the garden came the distant clackety sound of the lawnmower. The blue bottle flies buzzed about the wall, and a little old mouse picked over the trash among the jam jars. I can tell you her name. She was called Thomasina Tittlemouse, a wood mouse with a long tail. She rustled across the paper bag and awakened Benjamin Bunny. The mouse apologized profusely and said that she knew Peter Rabbit. While she and Benjamin were talking close under the wall, they heard a heavy tread above their heads, and suddenly Mr. McGregor emptied out a sack full of lawn mowings right on the top of the sleeping Flopsy Bunnies. Benjamin shrank down under his paper bag. The mouse hid in a jam jar. The little rabbits smiled sweetly in their sleep under the shower of grass. They did not awake because the lettuce has been so soporific. They dreamt that their mother, Flopsy, was tucking them into a hay bed. Mr. McGregor, looking down after emptying his sack, he saw some funny little brown tips of ears sticking up through the lawn mowings. He stared at them for some time. Presently, a fly settled on one of them, and it moved. Mr. McGregor climbed down onto the rubbish heap. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, he said, as he dropped them into his sack. The Flopsy Bunnies dreamt that their mother was turning them over in bed. They stirred a little in their sleep, but still they did not wake up. Mr. McGregor tied up the sack and left it on the wall. He went to put away the lawnmower. While he was gone, their mom, Mrs. Flopsy Bunny, who had remained at home, came across the field. She looked suspiciously at the sack and wondered where everybody was. Then the mouse came out of her jam jar and Benjamin took the paper bag off his head and they told the sad tale. Benjamin and Flopsy were in despair. They could not undo the string on the bag. But Mrs. Tittlemouse was a resourceful person. She nibbled a hole in the bottom corner of the sack. The little rabbits were pulled out and pinched to wake them. Their parents stuffed the empty sack with three rotten squash, an old brush, and two decayed turnips. Then they all hid under a bush and watched for Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor came back and picked up the sack and carried it off. He carried it hanging down as if it was rather heavy. The Flopsy Bunnies followed at a safe distance. 
They watched him go into his house, and then they crept up to the window to listen. Mr. McGregor threw down the sack on the stone floor in a way that would have been extremely painful to the Flopsy Bunnies if they happened to be inside it. They could hear him drag his chair on the flagstones and chuckle. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, said Mr. McGregor. Eh, what's that? What have they been spoiling now? asked Mrs. McGregor. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, repeated Mr. McGregor, counting on his fingers. One, two, three. Oh, don't you be silly. What do you mean, you silly old man? In the sack. One, two, three, four, five, six, replied Mr. McGregor. The youngest Flopsy Bunny sat on the windowsill. Mr. Mrs. McGregor took hold of the sack and felt it. She said she could feel six, but they must be old rabbits because they were so hard in all different shapes. Mrs. McGregor untied the sack and put her hand inside. When she felt the rotten vegetables, she became very angry. She said that Mr. McGregor had done it on purpose. And Mr. McGregor was very angry, too. One of the rotten vegetables came flying through the kitchen window and hit the youngest Flopsy Bunny. It rather hurt. Then Benjamin and Flopsy thought it was time to go home. So Mr. McGregor and Mrs. McGregor did not get the rabbits. But next Christmas, Thomasina Tittlemouse got a present of enough rabbit wool to make herself a cloak and a hood and a handsome muff and a pair of warm mittens. Well, I hope you like the bunny stories. And remember, Grandma Cleveland loves you.